Right, hi everyone, how's it going? Team here, and this is another live stream for BXJS. And um, we're doing another proposal today as usual, so this is how we go now. And um, this week's highest voted proposal was uh, full powered GraphQL backend with Next.js. So I'm not sure if you guys are aware of or not. I, I think I speaked about that at some point, but I um, haven't really worked much with GraphQL, so I had a look at it and uh, what I found was um, that, you know, and though they call it graph query language, it actually lacks a lot of features that you would need to properly query a graph, right? So if you're speaking um, something like Sparkle, for example, then this is a graph query language. This is more of a data query language. And my cat is trying to destroy something there, please don't. Um, so yes, uh, as I was saying, uh, this is more of a data query language, but it still seems to be very useful if you need to create a multiple um, APIs for your front end in a quick manner, right? So it's easier to set up and easier to configure than the rest interface. And stop going around on my keyboard, just go away. Okay, so um, today we're gonna be basically figure it out together. So I know the basics of it, but I never built anything with GraphQL. Um, hello, structures, how's it going? Uh, so yeah, um, we're gonna be figuring it out together. So uh, if you have any suggested libraries or um, anything that you wanna see me use, so in this case, let's see, the description says there's GraphQL, uh, MongoDB is a database, maybe Socket.io, although I don't really see, um, why would, I mean, I guess we could swap the interface from HTTP to Socket.io. Why not? We can do that one. Um, and with Next.js as a front end. So sure, um, we could do that. So let's go ahead and make GraphQL uh, next um, folder. Get init that. Bleh, I am messing stuff up. Get init that. And then npm init minus y. As I am lazy. So I'll fire up the VS code here. And uh, let me make it bigger because it's way too tiny. So I'm going to start with index.js and I do actually need an index.js. Maybe not yet. Okay, you know what? Let's start with next.js because I know for sure how next.js works. Uh, hello, coin coin. Welcome to the stream. Um, we're just getting started. So I'm setting up the next.js part because I do know how it works. So it's going to be easier uh, for me to get started basically. Uh, React and React DOM. Let's go with that. So we are, um, yeah, so let's start with the front end part, as I said, so I'm going to make something very, very simple. And uh, in this case, um, what do we want actually, so pages in the yes, there you go. That probably is sufficient, right? So I guess we need a react from react in this case, and that should be good. Um, come on. Yarn dev. So theoretically, we now should have a running Next.js service. We go to localhost. Is it 3000? Yeah, it is. Um, yes. There you go. Okay. So we have the Next.js working. And uh, for now, that's fine. So now we have to figure out um, GraphQL part, right? So, okay. Before that, we should probably do sort of. We should probably do the, um, what do you call it? The MongoDB part, right? So I'm going to go ahead and use Docker as usual. So we're going to have Mongo start. We are gonna have Mongo clean, which would wipe it. And uh, this is gonna be docker run minus D, call it, um, hell if I remember the ports for it. Okay, I had it in my project somewhere. So we're gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be lazy as usual and just copy it from one of my projects. We're gonna have that and we don't really need it anymore. Whoops, that is not what I wanted to set X. So we don't need a volume in this case, it's going to be just a pure Mongo. And uh, yeah, we're going to start, we name that, let's call it GQL Mongo, right? Just for the sake of it. And it's going to be GQL Mongo. Okay, so we're going to pull an image um, from the Docker Hub and run it with our name and just mapping the port to localhost. So I'm going to Mongo start. I, I think I actually wiped the Docker daemon just yesterday because they had too much stuff. So it's going to download some things. I hope that won't affect the uh, stream quality. Theoretically, it shouldn't. Okay, uh, so we got the Mongo started. Now we need the server, right? So that means we cannot use Next.js as is. We will have to do the server bits. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and 
Um, no, that's not what I want. I want examples. Let's go with um, Express.js, I guess, because why not? Um, I am assuming most of the GraphQL solutions would be like Express backed or ex at least Express compatible. So we are going to go for that. Right, here's our server. So we're going to yarn at Express and uh, I'm going to copy that stuff and put it. Yeah, let's rename it from index to server. That makes more sense. That is true. I'm going to save it, reformat it with um, pretty far, uh, prettier. Okay, we got blah, blah, blah. We got DRS handle. That is fine. So we can simplify that slightly. In this case, we don't actually care about that stuff, right? So okay, I, I will, I guess I will just save this for now as a comment. Because I, I mean, well, you know, screw that I won't even save that because it doesn't matter at the point. Okay, so if we, uh, we now have to change the scripts, right? Because they should not be the um, so dev is going to be just started. And the start will be with node and production. But it is so yarn dev, we should still be working. Is it right? Localhost 3000. Uh, come on. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so it works. Uh, right, so we got the server, we got the next just working. Um, now we have to figure out the GraphQL bit, right? So as I said, I haven't really worked with it. So I only had a look at the docs and specs and all that stuff comparing it to the Sparkle, which is the real graph query language. Uh, while GraphQL is definitely not a knowledge graph, like not a sufficiently uh, sophisticated to query knowledge graphs, it's still good enough for uh, creating a simple data APIs over the databases. And that's what we're going to do, I guess. So let us see. Um, what's a good start to get going with the technology you don't know? Um, first of all, let's go to GitHub and see the explore section, right? So this is always good. They have the categories now. Um, they probably have GraphQL here as well somewhere. Topics. Where do I see more topics? Uh, see even more topics. There you go. Um, can we get GraphQL? There you go. Okay. So let us see. I feel that this is a good starter point. Uh, prettier supports GraphQL. That's a pretty neat thing to know. All right. Um, we got the means tag. Don't care. Okay, we got the GraphQL JS, which is a reference implementation by the Facebook guys, I believe. Uh, yeah, so this is typically a boring thing that you don't want to touch. We got awesome GraphQL uh, list, which is always helpful. Okay, Apollo GraphQL is something I've heard about. So they, they do have like server and client here. So we might look at that. There is GraphQL. Uh, those guys did some nice stuff as well. So the Prisma was one of the like easier things to set up basically. And there is graph IQL. So this is the interactive thing for a browser. We don't care about that. Uh, post GraphQL, I guess a Postgres thing. Yep. And learn Apollo, Facebook, data loader, Apollo server. Okay, that seems like something like what we need. Okay, there's Express GraphQL. It also seems to be from the Facebook guys, as far as I understand. That is nice. Okay, so um, I guess that's enough. So let's just go through this and compare. So since we have so many tools that are not reference implementations, I suggest we don't touch that because I mean, I don't really care about reference implementation right now. We're not interested in decomposing it. Um, hey, wise, it's going good, as you can see, trying to figure out the GraphQL and <laughs> what the hell is going on with the setup. Um, seems like it's been ported to a bunch of languages already. Go for the JavaScript. Uh, okay, we open that express one. Yes, uh, we don't need core, we don't need code mirror. We don't need a schema, I guess that doesn't matter. So there's the SQLized models. Um, there's a graffiti and graffiti mongoose, which might be interesting for us. But there's an exclamation mark here and it's discontinued. So it looks like the rising stack guys decided it's not worth their time. Okay, we're not gonna touch that then. We got the bookshelf, um, not, don't really like it. Don't wanna touch that as well. Um, Walk uh, simple clients, we don't need clients, manager and loader, ORM loader, follow clients, tools anywhere, blah, blah, blah. Okay, um, thinky. So there's a rethink DB adapter for it, which is kinda nice. I mean, <laughs> that's actually pretty cool. Um, okay, let's see, fetch QL, fetch clients, blah, blah, blah. Okay, go back. Mm, okay, so basically it seems like Apollo, GraphQL, and the official implementation uh, over Express is what we wanna look at, right? 
we got Apollo client, we got Apollo server, those two. We got the GraphQL, so they have the Prisma thing, and I think they had a separate standalone thing as well. Uh, let me think, server example. Yeah, let's, why not? Uh, I guess they're using Prisma anywhere now, right? GraphQL Yoga as well. What is GraphQL Yoga? What is that? Uh, oh, ah, there it is. Okay. Fully featured GraphQL server with focus on easy setup. So what does it, is it like complete standalone server? Depends on Apollo Server Express. Okay, so it's an Express-based thing, but it's basically ready. So you can just take it and use it. Um, That actually sounds very nice. I mean, we might as well just go for that, right? Because we can basically take the existing server, override it, and uh, bind it to the next JS, right? That one might be a one option. Um, hey, Dev Deprecating, how's it going? Um, so... Let us see, um, blah, blah, blah. Okay, you know what? Maybe using Prisma might be even better because that was the thing that just essentially uh, installs on top of the server, right? So this is, let's see, it's a command line tool that you will init the server, init your GraphQL schema, and then deploy the server, which is not what we want actually because there's, who knows how hard will it be to integrate it with uh, Next.js. So let's not do that. Uh, yoga still remains a possibility. Uh, okay, we got the Apollo server already opened and we got this Express uh, GraphQL thing, right? So let's see. Uh, create a GraphQL. I mean, obviously we could just create a Next.js as a standalone thing and then create a server as a second package or second repository, whatever. Uh, but I don't, I, like I want to have all in one, right? So it doesn't really, the... Uh, Dragon didn't really specify if it should be one or more uh, entities, let's put it this way, one or more projects, but I would want to do it in one project because, you know, we, we can do it. So we already have the Express server here. So I don't really see a need to drag in another uh, thing to maintain essentially, right? Okay, let's see. Mm, create a GraphQL HTTP server with Express. So this is the official one from the Facebook guys, right? Let's see. Uh, you just pass in this thing with a schema and whether it should expose IQL, which is pretty nice to be honest. So how do you define a schema? Do they have an example here somewhere? How the schema is it like? Uh, I have this variable here, but it's not defined anywhere. Okay, express session we don't care about it. so i don't i want i want spend time um doing like authorization authentication session or whatever because it's just express js and then right you can do it yourself it's not, not a not a tricky thing to set up okay do you have any examples because this is what i'm interested in um right they don't really have any examples which makes me very sad but let's see okay they have actually oh they have an example in official docs okay that's nice okay there's we have the build schema ah okay so it's uh from the graphql package and then you have the build schema thing where you provide the schema but the thing is that in our case the schema will be more complex right because in this case the schema is just pure um I guess not the schema in our case, this object will be more complex because here they just return the object right away and we will have to write the resolvers. Uh, oh, it's you, Renato. Okay, now I, <laughs> I'm trying not to forget all your usernames, but sorry, sometimes it's really hard to keep track of that. So if I, you know, I'll just, I'm just gonna call you by your username in the Twitch chat. We're gonna go with that. Okay, um, let's see. So that's one option, but uh, um, let's see Apollo server. So, okay, this seems pretty straightforward to set up. So Express GraphQL thing. See Apollo server here. So we got uh, for Express connect, happy call and other stuff. Okay, cool. They have uh, variants here, which we can use and they have an example for Express. Again, you provide this schema, which you get where define or import your schema here. They have examples, packages, docs. They do have docs, so maybe in the docs. Um, blah blah blah. Select and write package. So tutorial. There you go. That's what I want to see. How to build a GraphQL server. Talk to SQL, MongoDB, and REST. Uh, we don't really care about SQL and REST, but we do care about MongoDB, right? Make it slightly smaller because that is overly big. Okay, uh, defining a schema. Yes, this is what I'm interested in. So type query test string. This is 
variable schema. Okay, this is more interesting. So yeah, there's like properties and fields, right? And then you can have references to other things. So this sounds... Um, you guys any have suggestions for uh, test data layout? I was thinking about doing like the blog posts and authors, which seems like, you know, the most straightforward way of doing things. Um, mocking your data. Um, yeah, okay, it's got so this is our query. This is our data. Um, blah, blah, blah. Customizing mock data. So they use the mocks for data. We don't really want to use mocks right now, right? What I would want to use is I would just write stuff, but I guess they also write it here, right? So make execute. Da, 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 da. Okay, and then they do the same for SQLize, Mongoose, and the REST endpoint. Okay, seems straightforward. So uh, this is the Apollo, right? So I don't really see where do they write resolvers. Uh, okay, there's the resolvers, and that doesn't seem like a valid JavaScript to me. Something got blocked or something? Try to do that. Um data oh yeah okay it was a snippet okay good so in case of mongodb we got this time return create then author okay this is the just mock data creation right now this this definitely doesn't look like correct javascript <laughs> what is going on um all right okay this is one option so we can try that clients I mean, clients, we don't really need a client, right? You can just use fetch and send the query to the endpoint. Yes, what kind of, uh, what kind of cat, what I know, cat, God damn it. Okay, the question is, what does this client provides on top of just calling the query? Is it like caching and, and all that stuff? Advanced data loading, queries, caching, mutate. Okay, so it has like caching, mutation, all that stuff. Uh, subscriptions, pagination. Okay, so there's like a bunch. Basically, you don't have to write all of that yourself, which is nice. Built for React, production ready. I guess, you know what? Let's just go with Apollo because it seems to be a complete solution. So we can use Apollo server and Apollo client. So I guess we would need um, body parser and we would need Apollo server express. So let's start with that. And I guess we can just go with this tutorial thing. Um, I maybe need as well to permit the frames here because my script blocker seems to be cutting out a bit too much. Okay, they have this tutorial kit. So let's open it as well and use it as reference. Um, can't think of a better example right now. First thing I'm saying, Pokemon me. I mean, do Pokemon, like the thing about the GraphQL and the knowledge graphs in general is that they have relations right do pokemon really have relations beyond the like this pokemon transform evolves into the other form pokemon because that's like really boring um plus we would have to find that pokemon data somewhere like you know like authors and posts i can create something myself but looking up pokemon data and importing it in a app is like that will take some time <laughs> all right um okay let us see so we got this, right? So, okay, schema is what I'm interested in. And we can, yeah, we can go, so yeah, blah, 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 you did this, you did that. Uh, mocks, they also have some mock stuff. This is schema. All right, so we would need basically data. Why not? Let's define a schema JS, right? And this schema JS, uh, let us see that file. I'll just copy this thing raw. Button. What? No, I said copy this and paste it here. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, first of all, I don't really want to use imports. I'm just going to go with good old node requires, right? Um, so question one is why do we need those mocks and require? Question two is what is this GraphQL tools and make executable. Okay, so I guess we need the GraphQL tools to do this make executable. So we don't need mock. Do we need mocks? What do they do? Go back. Data mocks. Uh, okay, so this is the basic mocking. I mean, I don't think like, why do you need a separate freaking file for that? And just inline it for now and see how that works, right? So we got that, we got this um, string schema. Okay, so this, 
uh, module exports, right? So we rewrite it to common JS. Uh, so we create the schema from these type definitions. We add mocks. In this case, this is just to provide the dummy data. And then, um, so after we did that, da, 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 da. okay, we can do this proper schema later on. Mocking is whatever. Where do they plug it into server? Uh, they don't really explain it well in the tutorial okay um so we got the graphql port which is graphql server is express okay so here's what we need to do right so this is the two lines that are important we need the server we um server we say that graphql is our okay we need body parser we just rearrange that real quick body parser require um body parser thank you very much and we need that GraphQL Express thing, right? So we need that. On um, require. There we go. Okay, and we need our schema, right? So this is uh, setup. It's gonna be npm packages, and this is gonna be whip our packages. I always say const. Uh, require uh, data schema right so this is how we point to the schema and I think that's it right so theoretically we do yarn dev right now uh, okay yarn odds graphql another dependency is it pure dependency or we didn't really require it anywhere I guess it's a pure dependency right Okay, so even though it's a reference implementation, it's actually used in the most places, which is a kind of, I guess. So GraphQL, uh, whoops, GraphQL. There you go, query missing. And uh, what was it, Graph IQL? Yeah. So this should present us with the um, interface, right? Okay, and if we execute a query here now, which was um, the example query, query, uh, da, 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 the don't really oh yeah there you go test string right so this is what we just write okay they even have a okay this is pretty neat like the way that you can get the auto suggestions is pretty cool oh hey dragon um what do you think about apollo state link is it better than redux i have no idea what you are talking about so we did not get to the client yet i um basically i don't i never used apollo before Seems to be a nicely written piece, uh, at least from you know from the tutorials and examples. Seems to be straightforward to use, but uh, once we get to the um, um, client bits, I will tell you what I think about the um, state link. I'm guessing it's just basically stupid bindings from the GraphQL results to the state, right? Um, I cannot really see what else you can do here. The state link. Doesn't seem to be mentioned anywhere, which is a bit weird, but okay. Basically, we're gonna see when we get to the uh, client part. Right, so we got that. Now let's define a schema, right? So because this is this is what actually matters. So let's go with um, same example. So we will get authors. We're gonna have last name, first name, and post. Why not? So let's just go with that. And then we're gonna get posts. In this case, ID, title, text, views. I don't really care about views right now, so let's just go with that. I don't want to implement views algorithms, basically. Query, um, to tell server about the queries that users are allowed to make. That is, so why, like, why can't I just query for, get the authors, all, okay, so I guess this is a special Apollo thing, or is it GraphQL thing? It feels a bit weird. I mean, we already defined the schema for author and post. Why can't I just uh, query by them? If I reload that, come on, start. I just say author, all authors, uh, type. Type, um, type author, okay. So author. Yeah, but in this case, it's not going to work, right? Because, yeah, I found int author. Yes, it's not going to work because we don't really have any data. Take the name found string. Um, I guess I'm messing up the query somehow. ID minus 14. 
if I do this, I'm not sure why is it minus 14. All right, we, we, it seems like the queries do work, all authors. Is there two author? Where does this data come from? What is going on? Like we have the mocks, but this literally like string mock. Okay, um, that is, feels weird as hell, but okay. Let's see, so we got this. Okay, this is the, um, they have a different branch or something for the final version. Server tutorial solution, there you go. Okay, this is what we wanna see. This, we got the engine, what the hell is the engine? Follow engine, now that is a different component. Caching and performance monitoring. Okay, we don't care about that right now. So expression, express middleware, uh, this is doesn't really matter right now. So we got the schema tracing cache control. We don't care about that either. Okay, so this, the setup within the server is essentially done, right? So all work that we have to do will have to be done within this schema and data, which means we're interested in looking in the schema part. Um, Okay, so they have this as well. Um, I don't really care about this fortune cookie thing. All authors, so it just returns all authors. This gives you an author by the first and last name. And yeah, okay, we got that. Type devs, and then, okay, the mocks, they basically removed, which means we can do that as well. So because we don't care about mocking data, right? We wanna work with the real data. Kill that. And then they do this resolvers thing, right? This is what we are interested in. So basically the way that GraphQL gets the data is through those resolvers. So we wanna define them like um, basically by default, we can just say that, you know, resolvers JS, um, ta -da -da type devs resolvers, there you go. I think by default we could just return an object and that would be considered resolved. So the data would be considered resolved. And um, right, so we have this, and in this case, um, basically, and just connect the command that, and if we take the author, we don't need the server anymore, right? We take the author and just come up with some random bollocks. So that theoretically, it should be an um, object, right? So ID one, Test author costs empty, for example. I forgot a comma. Okay, um, it's again. Okay, we can we can just basically say authors, for example, right? And then one, two, this test author two, for example, right? So this is gonna be authors from zero, and this is gonna be just authors. Uh, we can kill the fortune cookie because we don't use that author. So posts, uh, this is basically post for author. Okay. So we can, for now we can, we basically what I'm doing now is I'm showing how to uh, do that in memory and also making sure that I understand myself that it actually works this way. <laughs> so I'm going to get the post schema here. Um, come on. Oops, too many brackets. So post one, test post, comma, test text, say one. Uh, we're gonna, I, I assume they're going by ID, but I'm not sure that it's gonna work, but we're gonna test it in a second. Two text two is gonna be author two. So that is gonna be posts uh, filter, right? Uh, post so that P author, author, I guess like this. Um, okay, so we get authors find so that author author ID equals post author, right? And views, uh, we don't care about views. Right, so in theory, if I restart the server, if I didn't screw anything up, we should actually get some real data right now. I did so screw something up. I forgot to rename that to uh, to change that to common JS, right? Module X uh, words. Thank you very much. There we go. 
All right, uh, so in theory, we should now be able to get the data that we've actually entered, right? So all authors, if I just press, there you go, that works. So if we want ID and then we want first name, for example, we could see that as well, right? And then um, if we could find, what was the um, author? So that first name is test. Um, wait, is it, how do you use properly first name equals test? Is it like this? No, okay. <laughs> Let me let me have a look at the GraphQL reference because I honestly have very little idea of how to correctly write the queries. Project name. Oh, okay. So it's uh, it should be like this, right? There you go. Okay. So and then we can ask for like last name and post, and theoretically, and the posts are empty. But oh, okay. So because the posts are already defined, you I guess well like this. Is that how? Will it actually resolve it? I mean, theoretically, it should take this ID and then resolve it with. Um, I guess that won't really work, right? Yeah, okay, that won't work. Um, right, so I'm guessing. Okay, I mean, basically, we have the basics working, so we can query the data. So now what we need to do is we need to connect to the uh, MongoDB, yeah? And we need to actually uh, query the data from there or resolve the data from there. So to do that, we're gonna add um, mongoose. So, and I'm gonna go to mongoose.com and I'm gonna have a look at the tutorial because hell if I remember how to set that up. Um, I probably should not have closed that. We don't really need, so we did the mocking part, we did the resolvers uh query yeah okay we got that okay so they do the same exactly so you first could just return an object and connecting to sql is not what we care about so we got the mongo i have the mongo running yes i do have the mongo running um okay so we get yeah we can take mongoose and oh fancy you all right there was a version 5 released recently i haven't even looked at that yet okay we can go with that um so get the mongoose we connect to that's actually not what i want um they also i think they also use this same way of connecting which is uh, okay sequelize mongoose okay yeah they do this this is better so we do mongoose yes then we take yeah we have to you still have to do this bloody thing is i mean promises are native just you know just Use them by default, please. Um, so we're gonna do Mongo connect. Uh, yes, connect. There you go. Care about options actually in this case. GQL DB. Let's call it this way. And then um, we need to define models, right? So we say I don't care about view schema. So we need the author. Uh, author schema and uh, for author schema we obviously need that in this case i don't do we need the yeah yes it's gonna be number first name string last name string and post is gonna be oh my hell if i remember how to do that um do they do that here actually author post view cookie Oh, so they actually, in this case, they go all crazy and store authors and posts in the SQL database and then uh, views in MongoDB, which is like, okay. I mean, it's pretty cool that you can merge all of that with GraphQL, but if you do this in production, I, I can see some problems in coming. All right. Um, so we will, yeah, we will just do, uh, maybe I shouldn't have, it, did I close it? No, I didn't. Yeah, I did close it. Okay, so the uh, author schema. Let us start with this. Okay, uh, I wanted to have a look at the references. There was this like type. Oh my God, where was it? Uh, connections. There you go. Um, no, that is not the connections I meant. I need relations between documents. Mm -hmm. Ta -da -da -da. I okay. No, that's probably in models, right? That's that's the logical place for it to be. Moving, querying, find one, querying, um, schema model, model, documents. 
fancy constructors. Okay, maybe in documents. Like update, find by one. No, wait. Oh, come on, schemas. Ah, there you go. So type default. Uh, so it is an array, right? Of type. I think it's mongoose um, types object ID. And then there is some way to reference it to another collection. And the hell if I remember that. Uh, come on. Object ID somewhere? No, come on, there should be an example somewhere. Reference, no. On whose? Gotta be a query population. There you go. Schema type object ID ref story. Okay, so we say ref um, post, right? Wrong. Okay. So we got const author. Uh, <clears throat> let's not screw that up. Author. So there's going to be author schema. We get this is going to be post schema, right? Um, we only have post and author. So good. Case this is going to be number, type string, text string, and this is going to be type, uh, those types. Object ID. Wait, is that just types or is that they use the schema types, right? I, I don't know if there's any difference between this, but let's just go with the way that they um, they show it in the docs. It's always better. Schema types and ref is gonna be post. Uh, no, sorry, author, right? Yeah, okay, so we established the connection now post mongoose model. Posts, uh, posts, schema. There you go. And then we do exports author, author, exports, uh, post, post. And I mean, we could, um, for the, oh, come on, stat. And actually, I mean, we actually don't really need that here, right? We can act and done with it. Okay, so in this case, we need to say const author posts uh, wire MongoDB, right? And which means we can just kill all of that and resolve that thing. So we got author means we need to find author, uh, find one. And I guess we just pass arcs there. Is that how it works? Here's the question. How did they do that? Solvers and where args? Okay, I. Oh wait a second. How do how do the args look? Um. Very curious. I wonder. I wonder if that actually works. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um. So theoretically, it will require it. Will require it. Yes. Yeah, so should connect to MongoDB as well. Now, if we actually do that, post is not defined. Yes, ID now, last name now. Um, post is not okay. You know what? Let me just call log because I I need to know what the format of the args are to transform them, uh, to the correct um format for MongoDB, right? So let me load that. Play. First name test. Okay, so it's literally the object that we actually can pass into the. Uh, so the chat is saying that I wrote author as schema name. That. Uh, yep. Thank you very much. That would have. <laughs> that might have ended up as half an hour debugging trying to find where I messed up. Never good. Okay, author uh, find one, and then we just say arcs. That is. That's basically all we need to do. And then author finds all, right? That's all we need. Uh, okay. So post by author, which means we say post finds where author is author, right? So we have the author field here, right? Yep. It seems like a good way. And then again for post, uh, yeah. So post find, no, that's author find, right? 
that is author finds so that uh, posts includes post. That's what we want. Uh, we actually, don't, I don't think we need the array here. I think that should be sufficient. So in theory, if we run that, it should not throw any errors and should actually work, right? Reload that and we can just say authors. And if I run it, we should get an empty array. Perfect. And if we look at the, uh, that is super tiny. Let me just be bigger. Theoretically, if we look at the Docker, uh, the logs of the MongoDB, we should actually see the connection and should see very executed if the logging is enabled by default now. Hell, if I remember that. I guess it's not, but we actually have a connection open and it seems to be uh, doing its thing. Okay, so now uh, we have that. The question is, how do you execute um, insert queries? Now GraphQL insert, right? So there was a way to do that. It, oh, right, the mutations is what they call it. Um, do they have Apollo, so mute, uh, Apollo server docs, maybe they have it in docs, uh, Apollo tracing, that is not what I want. Come on, Apollo server docs. They don't, they don't mention it in the article. So the article is purely for query. Which is again, you know, it took us 40 minutes to figure it out. So it's not exactly complicated to set up. And I mean, you can essentially merge a bunch of knowledge bases into, uh, or I guess databases in this case would be better into something that can be queried via one endpoint, which is nice. I wouldn't really call it federated querying, but it's still a pretty nice thing that can unify your data uh, if you already have that kind of problem. Okay, that is engine. So they don't seem to talk about the mutations and insertions here at all, which means we can close that. And, uh, and I guess we can just try to insert a bunch of authors ourselves, right? So I'm gonna use the RoboMongo um, UI here. Why is it so tiny? Um, and then, uh, yeah, so we need to create some, yeah, I guess MongoDB is not exactly correctly. Okay. So, so we need Mongo schema. I guess it's going to be model in this case, right? And this way it should, but what uh, Mongo model is not a function. Um, how was it? If I remember how to properly set up MongoDB. Okay, let me be lazy again and just take a look at my old code. So we got mongoose create connection. That was it, right? Okay. This is what we want. So this is going to be connection. Call it DB. And I th think this way, then you can define. Yeah, that should be it. Okay, uh, save, rest uh, oops. start. And Mongo, so I, I theoretically we should now have no, we're not. Where's my where's my database? What? Come on. Connection local. Oh, no, that is correct, right? What am I missing? Um, let's see. So global promise, we connect to the. Uh, I think the config says yeah, local host, whatever. Um, retries doesn't matter. So we got the schema. We then say DB. Okay, we get the connected, but that doesn't matter. DB model article. So that theoretically should be working, right? So we got the resolvers. We import. So that seems like it should be working. Uh, is it the minus here that it doesn't like? Or maybe forgetting about Mongo and it's the database names policy. Oop. Hey, it's still running. Docker logs. Uh, client accepted. Metadata. Okay. Um, a type number. Ooh. 
Maybe let's try to index staff. Maybe then it's gonna create them. I mean, I just need need to see my my knowledge base and and my some objects in there. Okay. Oh yeah, there you go. Okay, so now I build indexes and now I actually have collections. Cool. So we can, um, I guess we can. Uh, so insert right and uh, in case we can say ID one. First name, user, first name, last, whatever. What do we have? We have posts, which I, for now, will leave empty, right? Just leave it empty. Okay. So we got now one user with four fields. Double for whatever reason, it can be double, why not? Okay, let's insert a post as well. So we actually get just some data to play with, basically title, test post, and text, test text, right? Then author is gonna be object ID. In this case, uh, copy value. Pay, uh, okay, it copies it. With ID wrapper, so this is what we want to do. Uh, find, right? So now I have this. Okay, cool. So in theory, if we just do this, we got author and then first name, so we should have our name. There you go. Posts. Um, posts should have title and text, and theoretically, if we run that. There you go. So this now works. Our querying works correctly and we have proven that it does. Um, designing GraphQL mutations post. Okay, that's a good. Let's thank you for sharing. Let's have a look. <coughs> <coughs> Crap, I apologize. <coughs> oh my God. All right. Okay, so it's from the same guys and it's just a separate post. Mm. Okay, so mutations correspond to user actions. That makes sense. Okay, so what we need here is we need a mutation number one, create user, mutation number two, create post, right? So let's see what do we have. Mutation. Okay, this is, I guess this goes to this schema, right? Um, I mean, it would be nice if they had a full example somewhere. Do they have it? Putting it all together. Type, schema. Oh, okay, I see. You can uh, add a bunch of types and we can just say, yeah, so we can define mutations later on and then just say schema, mutation, uh, add, let's start with add user, right? So we got this add user thing. Root mute. Oh, root mutate. Okay, so okay. Mutation root mutation. Let's do it the same way. Mutation, right? Um. So we have this bunch of things. So we're gonna say create author. And in this case, okay, it's gotta be a bit more complicated, I guess. Okay, so we got this input, create to do inputs, create to do payload. I create to do input, ID is generated by the backend and completed is automatically set to false. I would, what are those things? Um, create person inputs, another person ID name, update person. Mm, okay, create person input ID. Uh, by nesting, we have room at the top level of input. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Oh, why do we have to make it so complicated? Don't they ever be used. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, input ID, new text, set of ID. Okay. Reason is that. Okay, so this input thing is that the value, like the value that we will actually pass and here it's something with exclamation mark whatever it means i feel like we should read the specs first okay so we have this message string string okay very uh set message okay so there will be a function that gets called whenever that is executed and it will get the property which is passed here 
All right, that seems straightforward enough. So type mutation. So basically, they you don't really need that. Uh, okay, so we define inputs. Good. So let's start with that. We don't care about this right now. Let's first define inputs, right? So we define input. This is going to be um, author input. And to make more sense of it, we're going to place it next to the author, right? We're going to uh, say that it needs first name and it's going to need last name. And that's it, right? Now we're going to do the same for the post, uh, which is going to be a post input. It's going to have title, it's going to have text, and it's going to have author, which is. Um, an author right um pum, 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 pum. what is this exclamation mark and what does it mean i guess it's generated automatically or something you have explanation what the hell is that uh that is really great the constructor id content author the exclamation doesn't what is oh come on okay you know what at this point i don't really care um if you're interested you can find it yourself i mean it seems like it's just going to be like auto generated by graphql or something among those lines but whatever we can go with that so once we define those inputs we need to define the mutation right uh so in this case we got this type mutation and in this case, we get the create author, which is going to be input author input. And it returns author. And we're going to have create post, right? And it's going to be input um, post input. And return a post. Okay, so if I understand correctly, then we go to the resolvers. And in this case, it's going to be under mutations. Am I understanding this correctly? No, it's not. It's just going to be under roots, which is. But OK. So which means that we will have those two functions, right? And we're just going to put them over here. Really? Like the main stuff is that feels weird. I feel like it's going to be under mutation, right? Or mutation. Yeah, mutation we have here. Yeah, so and this is basically what should be here. Okay. Let's just give it a shot because I mean, I really feel like this is how it should be. Right? Let's just do console log. Uh, create author called going to be inputs and in this case we're going to say create post call okay <clears throat> uh, string exclamation mark means that field is non-nullable meaning the graphql service promises to always give you a value when you query this field okay that might be useful um right okay let's see there's the docs so how do i how do i actually execute an insert query in iql if i know yeah. uh this is the search right so we have the search and the, 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 oh i yeah, you have to define it as a mutation okay. And it doesn't really suggest anything for us. And then we have to, okay, then we call the create. Am I missing something? Because I feel like it should also auto suggest that as well. I forgot to create something. Type mutation, input. No, that seems to be the exactly same schema as they have. So theoretically, if we do create author, um, how does the query looks? Is it just an object here? Uh, input and then something. Okay. Put uh, first name test last name test uh, string test one and uh, they are okay. This is a proper JSON object in here. Um, why are you? 
Okay, that should be split, and then um, this, and then syntax error, unexpected single quote character. Wait, you, oh come on, really? Always double quotes. Okay, um, post author must be input type, but got author. Why is that talking about post input? Thought I create author, right? Author input author. Create post. Did I forgot some separator or something? Uh, no, I didn't. So. Why don't you like it? Error. Uh, type of post input author must be input type, but got author. Uh, right okay i guess you are not happy that is author so let's call it int i guess happy about that i mean we can reference it internally using mongodb right so i, I assume that great author called undefined uh i believe that might be that there are also two um variables so let's see great message and is gonna be okay i it, it is wait but it's it cannot be undefined because it destructs into input. Now that feels very weird. Um, maybe then. Maybe maybe their article has explanation. Maybe the Apollo uses a different format, which would be weird as hell. Okay, so we get that mutation grid person input, then we get all of that stuff, and then show me the code handles that so this is the schema where's the code that handles that this just talks about exactly the same thing that graphql docs do uh, but so update inputs and then what do you get back yes this is all clear Put mutation we got the inputs okay that is slightly weird. Uh, we didn't done it client yet. Okay. Um, they did not have any mutations in the other example, right? Uh, so end to end example. This is this is yeah. This is example without inserts. This is easy to do. Come on. Post and get format. Post requests. Uh, okay. This is just how you query the endpoints. Related. Those docs do not seem to be complete, to be honest. How to GraphQL? I mean, okay, let's have a look here. So in theory, author, so it, it does call this function, right? So it is mutations and then create author. The question here, did I screw up? So no, it is it is input and then the names right so we get exactly this format okay mm, variables input query okay this is actually char request from the client what am i missing as uh, any anyone in chat knows what am i missing is probably something super obvious but um the author called undefined right um i mean Right, input, but I feel like that destruct won't work if there's nothing comes in the first place, right? That reload, come on. Uh, yeah, cannot destruct property input of null, of course, because nothing comes in. Let's call it args for now, and uh, let's do this, right? So theoretically, I feel like I'm missing something very obvious, but... So we got this create author now and then it's undefined. So why is it undefined? Mm, input this and this. All right. In this case, so let's see carefully. We get the create message and this is what's called here. Okay, and then create message has message input which is string string. So we get exactly the same here. We get the create author and input author input. It is the first name and last name. 
Did I misspell them here? First name and last name? No, I did not. They're both strings. Okay. If I like this, just to make it slightly clearer so that we didn't screw anything up, still no. Uh, mutation, create author. Okay, uh, that is wanted. It doesn't seem like you need anything else in this schema, right? Um, okay, here's the question. Can it be that it really, the resolver should be at the top level, not at the mutation level? It would be very weird, but if it works, then well, hell if I care. Um, did I screw something up? What? Okay, resolvers, but not in schema. So this is indeed correct. Okay, I figured that part out. Let message roots, root value, uh, schema, schema. Kidoki. Mm, okay, you know what? Let me just do a Apollo server mutation example because I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. Okay, so this seems to be a full example and uh, run and blah blah blah. Okay, mutation. Cool. So Right, root mutation, uh, add item. Okay, that seems very similar to what we already did, right? Uh, root mutation resolvers. So they got the mutation resolvers. We got this root mutation. This is resolvers and this is... Is that because it's called root mutation? Is the naming important here? That should not be the case, right? That would be ridiculous. But is not configured for mutation. Now it's not configured. Okay, I guess the naming is important, which makes it weird. Okay, dokie. Let's have a look at the. So we got the server. Got the schema. Let's have a look at the schema. Tell me, it does not assemble a schema from all the stuff. Okay, type devs. Uh, root mutation so at the root mutation type okay and resolvers the fact that it's split up over everything it doesn't really help me so Oriel graphql mutations with react i could not care less about react but let us see this one maybe Okay, let's see. Type devs, channel, message, query, mutation. Okay, so right. So you have to have type mutation and then your functions within it. Right. Um channel, okay, query, channel. This is the querying part. This is querying part. This is still querying part. Posting a new message. There we go. Okay, so we got this input, we did that. We got a mutation, we did that. It is, okay, I guess exclamation mark here actually is something we do wanna do because we do need that data to create both user and um, schema root value graph IQL. Um, did I define, I mean, I did define the entry point, right? With a uh, graph IQL, I did define it with schema, but Resolvers are passed for this make executable schema thing from GraphQL tools. So I'm assuming it's all in one. I mean, I might be mistaken here. But it, it does accept the mutation, right? It just doesn't execute the correct bit, uh, like the correct function. So resolvers have this mutation out message root and then, oh, for fuck. Uh, I knew it would be something something stupid like this. Okay, so it should be like this, right? Uh, what do you know, root mutation is not defined, right? I forgot to erase that. And theoretically right now, we should actually see our me method called correctly. Uh, and hey, it works. Okay, perfect. So in this case, we're gonna destruct into inputs. We're doing things. Inputs, that was pretty simple, as it typically ends up being. <laughs> okay, so if I restart that, 
Um, so this is the first mutation, right? Right. And then um, create post input. So we got title second post. Uh, I think we need a, I need a comma there, right? Blah, blah. Can I actually chain them? Interesting question. No, but that would mean I need, I ask for that, right? So text blah, author, for example, right? And then we do that, we get, yeah, okay, that works perfectly fine, right? So now we need to save them into database, which is trivial, really. Um, so we say return, in this case, we say auth, uh, no, wait, go so const author, new author from input, right? Then, uh, but we need to actually extend it. So in this case, we say input, and then we say ID is going to be um, sync. Obviously, this is not the perfect way of handling IDs. I mean, I guess it would be better to just map the ID to the Mongo um, underscore ID. But in this case, you know, we already started. So let's just do author counts. This is going to be a B, right? This, uh, this is gonna be wait, and then I hope it supports promises. And then we're gonna say await author save, right? So we're gonna save it to database, and then we're gonna return author um, D. No, we're gonna return the author to object actually, because we want all data in there, right? So if I kill that now and I restart the whole thing, theoretically. Hello world, or a bit, that is the wrong button. So first of all, let's open RoboMongo and see our authors object. So we only have one now, the one that I inserted manually right now. And if we execute that, at the ID one, uh, which is actually wrong, but I, because that is purely because I screwed up, right? Yep, it adds it, but the ID is wrong. So we should edit that. Let's put it to two, yeah, oh, whoops save because that should be id is count it should be count plus one right so it should be one more right now we do the same for um so it does support promises which is nice by the way so now we do the same for uh posts so first of all we're going to find an author um author find one so that id is input um well, what did we use where's the schema we used author right author right okay and then we're gonna say uh const again okay wait don't forget that otherwise we're gonna save a promise which is not what we want so we're gonna create post new post and we're gonna say that uh, i'm just gonna copy this and so we're going to say title is input title input text i guess we could just okay yeah just say input and then we're going to say author is going to be author underscore id right because we want to map it to the existing uh, existing user in our database save and then return post to object Okay, uh, yeah, you don't like dangling underscores, but I don't care about that right now. So we can do, uh, whoops, no, that is not what I want. Um, wait a second, I had it somewhere in my, oh. So author in this case is gonna be two, for example, and we're gonna return ID, right? Uh, reload, good, and ID is null. Question is, did it insert the post or not? Um, find. That they did insert the post. The author seems to be correct. Oh, right. Uh, because we should also do the ID in the same way because we already have ID, right? 
Ah, this is a bit of a pain in the ass, but this is my own fault because I didn't know how the um, GraphQL works. So I screwed up in this sort of schema design. Right, so this is gonna be count plus one. And that basically does it, right? So this is our backend. So it's third, um, I have to restart that. So third post, blah, blah, blah. Um, wait a second. First of all, we need to update. So we got to edit that. And that ID is going to be two, right? Now we going to bleh, no, that. There we go. So basically now it works and we can actually say, um, no, author, we got to say all authors. So we got two authors, we got post, oh, we don't have a post query, right? So we can add that via schema. Um, do, 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 do. So we can say, oh, posts, posts, and we can say post by um title for example why not oops posts and maybe as well author right now we don't really care about that let's just go for that so if i restart that theoretically we should be able to reload and get all the posts all the authors and search for the so all posts it is null um why is it null because i don't have a resolver for it right yeah okay we have to add this and this and post. So this is args. Um, yeah. So basically, it co all comes down to writing those uh, resolvers, right? Those finds. That's all we need to hear. And then turn posts finds args. Like writing that with MongoDB is super easy what do you what do you not like oh um that's what we want there you go okay so if i restart it now we should get all the posts so we now have ability to read posts to read authors to query for them uh both ways and to insert them as well there you go and of course we can ask for a title text whatsoever we got our nice post and then maybe author as well um, author, first name, last name. Why are they empty? Because I am querying them wrong, right? So what we actually need to do is, so we query for the post. And then it, uh, I guess it resolves the author. How does it resolve the author? That is a good question. So we query for the posts, right? So this is our query. Uh, no, we get all posts, right? And then it should resolve. So I guess it's it's again this screw up that it doesn't resolve authors by ID, but rather by a second, just for the sake of it. Um, I guess if I would map to the, uh, instead of just random IDs that we make ourselves, I would map to the, um, oh my God, come on, MongoDB IDs, right? We would actually uh, be able to have that running without any problems. In this case, okay, so this is not how it resolves them. I guess all posts find this. Should resolve author uses the query as well. I guess it uses the query as well, right? Because this is the only way I can imagine it would. No, it doesn't. That's interesting. So how does it query for authors of the posts? That this resolution, am I just looking at the wrong thing? Did I just put it in the wrong place first time because I'm an idiot? That might be the case. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So it actually resolves author like this. And then what we need to do is uh, author find. We actually don't need this post post, right? So we just need post author. Uh, find one. Find, no, find 
by ID, this is what we need. And theoretically, that right now uh, should be, there you go. So we fixed that. Okay, so it works fine. Those IDs are small problem when we're inserting, but not much problems otherwise, right? Let's call it this way. Okay, so we got that now. Now we're come to the part where we have actually this thing working. So this is the backend, and you know what? Let's do this. Um, get ignore node modules. Uh, get or next. We don't uh, bleh, no. Not need this and ignore. Okay. Okay. Git commit. Um, git commit basic GraphQL. Uh, interface for MongoDB. Right, let's call it this way. And so now that we have the backend ready, we need to write uh, some sort of um, front end. Um, I mean, I honestly, like if we're speaking from the perspective of a production ready app, then obviously you would want to use a client. But uh, the way that you interface with the backend seems to be so simple that just using simple fetch in most cases would be sufficient, but let's go for the clients uh, because why the hell not? So get started, let's go. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Getting started, React integration. React integration sounds nice. Uh, that is a ton of stuff you have to install to use one client. Uh, follow client preset. So they, they even have some sort of pre-compilation preset here. Okay, that is, that is pretty, pretty tough. But okay, why not? Let's go. Let's let's do this. Why the why the hell not? So yarn adds. We already have GraphQL installed, right? So that should not be re-added. Uh, there's some GraphQL tag thing. React Apollo and Apollo client preset. Okay. Get started Apollo with React, Apollo client, and Apollo provider. Okay, so this is our um client thing. So I guess we can create it. No, not what I want components folder right and we're going to create a gql client uh js i put all of that stuff in here and then whoops uh so it defaults to slash graphql which works absolutely fine by us export default client right so theoretically uh, why are you not all well, clients should be listed on a project's dependencies i it not wait you just oh hey okay. wait you have to run both that is a ton of packages just for one client okay sure why not let's try that okay we got that This we got that okay. We don't really need to change the URI, so it's fine. Uh, creating a provider, React render. Okay, so we wrap our app into this, which means that we have to go into next. Yes, and I should remember how the hell do I do that? Actually, um, they actually have example for that. Apollo, no Apollo. Yeah, they do have Apollo. There you go. Cool. So components um, app. No, this is just the wrapper error message header. It's header pages index. App header submit post list. Lib with date. Oh, okay. They have this lib with data thing. Okay. Uh display blah blah blah. Sing initial props, Apollo data. Need Apollo, Apollo provide. Okay, so they have this whole wrapper written specifically for this case. Uh, what does it actually do? So we get this React Apollo thing and we got the Apollo provider and there is as well a need Apollo. I mean, I guess we could just copy that, right? Because it seems to be quite elaborate way to plug it in. Apollo JS, let's go this way. Uh, so we can, I guess we can kill that because we don't really need that anymore. Just delete that. All right, so what we have, init Apollo. Okay, this is our init. And they also have 
okay, we need that. So they also set it up in a way that will work uh, server side. So because they use this as an isomorphic unfetch. Okay, that's interesting. It's a new package I haven't seen. But okay, let's let's go with this. So they set it up that it will work both on browser and on server side whenever the um, Next.js does server side rendering. Um, the question from the chat, what autocomplete I'm using? This is the default autocomplete in uh, Visual Studio Code. It is one of the major reasons why I'm actually using it. So pretty great. Okay, so we got the function create that creates this new client with dev tools if it is in a browser we have ssr mode if it's not in a browser we have the link um, which we actually don't care about so we should theoretically just do that right because we are using the um wait a second where is it yeah so we just initiated it like this it will default to slash graphql which is good for us we will restore initial state if there is any initial state. That is good. And then in interpolis, we get initial state. Okay, so that seems straightforward. And then we got the second one, which is with data. Let me copy that. Let's create this, uh, oops, no, here. With data.js, right? Okay. Okay, that's, okay, let's have a look at this. So what do we have here? So display name uh for dev tools okay whatever we can live with that parsing error unexpected okay the eslin doesn't support static field names yet okay that's weird post component okay so it returns a new react component which is called with data that has this display name that has this server state property that has the sync get initial props uh, function this is the next.js function right what it does it creates the server state it tries to get initial props from the post component is what is passed okay from the component that is passed and if we're not in a browser it needs a polar and gets the data from it it seems yep and then renders the tree okay so Oh, and then basically if we're in the server, it just renders the habit cell. Okay, so that seems basically all of those wrapping is required only because we are um, running with the server side rendering, right? Um, what autocomplete in the shell? This is a Z shell with, oh, hell if I remember it. Wait a second. So this is all my Z shell um, plugins, I think. No, yeah, it is. Is it plugins? Okay, wait a second. On my shell, um, it was auto foo, I think, or maybe auto suggestions. One of those. <laughs> Some of those works. Um, oh wait, wait a second. Z shell RC. Uh, no, that's not not correct. Z shell RC. Um. Yeah, it is Z shell auto suggestion. I think it is this one, yeah. Because auto foo doesn't seem to be enabled at all. All right. So we got that. And then we need pages. So we need, they need our page after that, right? I think the page was just wrapped into this. So with data, yeah, we import that with data thing. And then uh, what we do here is we say with data and then we wrap the app. Yeah, okay. So theoretically, um, da, 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 uh, yeah, right. That, is that a function? No, it's, it should be called directly, right? Like this, okay. Oh. And uh, what do you not like from here? Err, an imported module, unexpected, I yeah, saw it off. Whoops, I am now in a wrong folder. Um, yes, here yarn dev, let's start it. So in theory, if we go um, once localhost 3000, thank you very much, should render. So it does renders, right? So now we need to actually get the post lists and yeah, we can create both of those components, post list and uh, submit. So let's call it submit JS. And again, post list JS, why not? 
Um, I'm going to be lazy and just going to copy them from, from uh, examples. I mean, I guess we're going to alter them a bit because our schema is probably not going to fit uh, the way that the, they written it. So we're going to uh, change it a bit. Right. So what do we have here? We got all posts. What is this thing? Come from post list. Oh, okay. This is the other component. Yeah. Okay. It makes sense to start with this. Uh, we got the post list. Oh, I actually inserted it in the wrong place. So this is the post list. Um, error message, post upvoter. We don't care about that. Okay, so here's our function that takes data loading error, all posts, all posts, meta, more posts. So we don't care about loading more for now. We will just return a diff here saying error loading posts. So I'm going to be very uh, minimal about all of that, right? And why are you not happy about what is going on? If yeah, that seems to be what unexpected token const. If error returned, if uh, right, that's how it should be. Okay, um, React blah blah. Yeah, okay import react i mean i know that it is not exactly important in the in the next js but um anyway just to make lincher not complain okay we got the data all post section ul post of voter so we don't care about that we got the post we don't have url here so it's going to be post title uh good h1 for example right h1 uh, post ID that's fine, and then it's gonna be post ID, and then it's gonna be diff, and within this diff, we're gonna have post uh, text, and last diff, or I guess call it small, for example. Small here, we're gonna have post author, right? Care about index here. More posts, we don't care about that. So we have some styling. Uh, hell if I care about styling right now, we're gonna kill that to make it lighter. Our motor post can be killed as well. So, okay, that looks good. All posts, and there's our query. So we query all posts. We don't care about all the skips. We don't care about any ordering. Um, we don't care about meta actually text and uh in this case we're gonna say whoops we say we want author right and within author we want id and first name and last name right i understand correctly this is how it should work okay we don't care about that graphql option variable we don't really need any variables here so we're gonna kill the options props um Looks like we don't need that as well. It's gonna be a very simple one. GraphQL wrapper executes a graphical query and makes the results available on the data props of wrapped post list. Okay, again, removing a bunch of things uh, made it way easier than it actually was, right? I did slightly, there you go. Whoops, const much. Okay, uh, so we can start with that. Um, we can say, okay, import post list from post list, right? And then we can say, yeah, let's uh, let's just wrap it into div. With um, post list, right? Yo, okay, so in theory, very old posts, unexpected dollar found. Where do we have a dollar? FKL, um, is the really need that? I think this is all we actually have, right? Very old post. Um, that what do you want? Right, because we don't have any parameters, right? uh okay objects are not a valid react childs 
uh, found object with keys ID first name last. Oh right, uh, because I'm I'm we actually got an author author right. So first name here, then it is gonna be last name, and theoretically, yep, that actually I mean <laughs> that looks terrible, but it works. Um, what we could do is we could indeed wrap our app. So let's let's make it slightly nicer. So I'm going to make an app JS over here. I'm going to import app from components app. And I'm going to say app app, right? So it's probably going to export default. Uh, no, this. So we're going to start with diff uh, this props children uh, children there go okay theory um right i cannot do that i should do the uh yeah right okay i can actually do this right no even this children there you go that should work okay now um next js so we don't care about that for the moment we want to make it look slightly nicer you can remove all posts meta and get rid of yeah yeah so i mean that's like um we'll see what else we can trim out of there because i want like we don't need pagination we don't need all of that in our example i think it works perfectly fine as is so it's like you know uh okay let's see head uh where's the way out of your populating the head yeah there you go. that's what i want so let's i'm just gonna be super lazy and what i'm gonna do is I am gonna do this. So I'm gonna do this and this, and uh, gonna be children. And uh, this is a div. Kill that. Okay. Title is gonna be not like again. Missing validation. Don't care. Fine. From React. There you go. Happy now. Okay. So this is gonna be graph. UL example, right? And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to Bulma and I'm just gonna include it as a CSS because I am lazy. Uh go to NGS, there we go. And we're gonna copy min.js, uh, min CSS, link tag, whoops. Okay, we included that. Last name. So let's see what's the Bulma layout. I think it was like container or something, right? Layout. And yes, we got the container. So theoretically, we now look slightly nicer. So now let's make those posts into some components. Uh, what do we have here? There is like a card, right? So we can we can go into a card. Yeah, let's do a card. Why not? So where is our um, post list, right? And do a post here, which will have post. Uh, so yeah, post data as props. And I guess we can just return that. We can take this card and do this, right? Better. So first of all, class. Then name header so this is going to be post title if and that's okay so we got the header and we need the card content content right so this is our uh, gonna be our body this is gonna be post text and then in the footer we are going to place our um, user info, right? Name. So that this doesn't look so terrible, basically. <laughs> I mean, it's not going to look much nicer, but at least it's going to be, you know, somewhat viable. So in this case, I am going to say post and it's going to be post post. Self closed and just kill all of that stuff. So the code is now much nicer and much easier to read. We can kill that. Thank you very much for help, chat. Um, I think we are good. Are we? Kinda. 
So we can say, um, style JSX, do a style here, and then it should be like this, right? I can say that cards, what I call terrible lazy uh, CSS, margin top 20 peaks. I mean, you know, at least we have some sort of separation between them. <laughs> okay, I think in a footer, we could also make it slightly nicer, card footer item. Maybe if we make it into a div class name. There we go. And how does it look now? Now it looks a bit better. Written by, so that indicated actually a user. And then here we can actually include a post. I mean, we don't really need the post ID, right? That looks absolutely fine. Okay, so we got our list of the posts. Now we need the submit thing. Uh, there we go. There's our submit thing. And in our case, we need to tweak the page here. Say import submit from components uh, submit. And say submit. There you go. Okay, so in this case, export defaults div mid here just to see that it actually renders. Come on. Yeah, okay, there we go. It renders. Okay, so now let's have a look at the submit thing over here. Once again, we're going to just copy that. I don't know if we're going to need the stuff that it actually includes here. We're going to see. Right, so we got this all posts and all posts query wars. I have no idea what is that. Okay, so we got this all posts thing. All posts query wars was this set of variables that they used for. Uh, da, 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 da. There you go. Yeah, so we don't need that. That's that thing we know. We can kill this. Okay, submit, create posts. Uh, let's see, how does it, so this is the submit component, right? I'm gonna rewrite it because it's easier for me to understand like this. So I got the handle submit event function, which um, creates a form, what, form data? Create post, form data, get title, form data, get URL. I mean, okay, oh, I, they just use the form here, okay. Import again act from react to stop the slint from bugging me post list here okay so we yeah we'll go that we reset the form and we'll submit so in theory we should see the form here yes there you go but in our case there's gonna be text and title right uh type text required submit we don't care about styling now. We can kill all of this. Uh, we can actually go for a nicer form by uh, having a look at the Bulma styles. Because why the hell not? Uh, general text input. Yeah, there we go. I think it's just like class input, right? So class name input. Input. Uh, new posts create right so this is gonna be slightly nicer so i guess we're gonna say class name button we're gonna make it slightly better but yeah there you go that works okay so create post so we got the mutation create post and then it is actually not what we're gonna do so it's gonna be an input that no it's not uh, so it's gonna be dollar. What did we have there? Hell if I remember um, Where's our schema? So we had the create post we got a post input which is text title and author ID. I Mean in ideal case you would just have uh, Idle string text string and author uh, is gonna be int and also require right create post title title text text and author um, author okay and text author first 
last, right? Okay, and then we got this. So we get mutation, create, uh, uh, oh, okay, this update, proxy data. That is, okay, we don't need those variables here. That's one thing. And we don't need those variables here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, that seems, so we need to take this author from somewhere. But I guess I'm just going to make an input for it as well because not holder author ID. Yep, okay. Back to dollar found name author. Uh, oh, that, okay. So we got new post from GUI, test text from GUI, author one, create. That didn't seem to do anything. All right, no errors as well. So let's try that again. Test post from GUI. Test text from GUI, right? Author ID one. It create um, 400. So what is 400 and what is missing? So we got three notation variables. Title, you were, wait, what? Did I forgot to, oh, okay. Title, text, author. Okay, that is where I should change the variables as well, author. And that seems to be it, right? Okay, let's try that again. So, test post from GUI, test text from GUI, author one, create, and no. Mm, come on. So, what is wrong this time around? Um, Text now. Yes, I screwed something else up. Let's see. Te uh, title, text, and author, right? Title, text, and author. Title, text, and author. Title. Oh, bleh. there we go. This is what I screwed up. Right. Let's try this one more time. That test test one eight. Now what? Uh, okay, variables, text, and title. So where is it, where does it take those variables from? Oh right. Oh man. Okay, I'm an idiot. Um, because we're calling this function manually, I should actually handle it manually as well. So we got author, and we got text. Right there we go. Okay. We compiled. Reload. Test. Test one. Hey no. Come on. Okay, this time around the variables are correct. So what's the error? Unknown argument title, unknown argument text. I guess it should be um, should be input like this, right? Because we define the input as the input parameter there. So I'm guessing it wants the same structure of it. Loading. Okay, so it actually posted. It seems to be created, but now it says loading for for some reason. Why does it says loading? Proxy all. Oh, loading. Where do you? Why? Yeah, there you go. Div loading and if post link. So it's for some reason seems to override the posts. Yeah, there you go. There, there it changes it, but. And yeah, okay, so the post is saved basically now. The problem is that for whatever reason it doesn't actually um doesn't actually update the UI for that. Yeah, so the request definitely finishes, so we're good on that. So why doesn't it update the post lists? Um uh, if which means all posts are now empty. So post list this comes from GraphQL. Huh? Log data. Update. Let's see what comes in data after that update. So maybe there's something I am missing here. Data is not defined. Uh, probably have to destruct that myself, right? Oops. From data. There you go. And uh, this loading seems to be useless, right? Because it's never used actually. Um, so, okay, let's see. Uh, so we got the data variables. Da, 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 da. 
All posts. Okay, so in this case, we get all posts as required. And update variables, error fetching, errors undefined. So where's my data? That is very weird, but basically update triggers without any post in there. That's very strange. Missing field ID in first name, last name. I guess we also, oh, maybe it's because it's invalid. So we need ID here as well. That's why you're not working. So one, <gasps> ah, there you go. So it was just missing property and was failing validation essentially. There we go. That is our um, basic version. Yeah. So we created a backend. We tied it into Next.js app. We, well, not without some fighting, but we actually managed to make it work all in all with um, Apollo client and Apollo server. Some Bulma styling. Obviously, it's not pretty and not, you know, super fancy. So, but it does work fine. I am not sure why is there this image over here. It should not be there actually, but whatever. You know what? Don't even care at this point. So let me, um, ta -da 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 -da. okay. First of all, do I have any console logs left anywhere? No, console, yes, I do have it here. We don't need it here, right? I need that loading as well because we're not using it. And we are actually done. So while I'm um, a add basic UI uh, for post list and post creation. Um, while I am going to be like adding readme and pushing that to the GitHub, you have a few minutes to ask your questions um, and, you know, write whatever you want to ask me in the chat, I will have a look at that in a second and I will answer all of that stuff once I see it. Right, so we got github.com bxj, uh, no, probably should rename the org. Can you rename the orgs? Will that break everything? Okay, we need to first of all create GraphQL next sample. Let's call it this sample for graph uh, ql application with next js frontend right uh that sounds good what i actually wanted to do is copy the readme from somewhere that's why i came here because i'm a lazy and uh yeah let's go with this readme why not so readme md so far no questions from the chat which is fine by me Oops, come on. So this is gonna be um, never this line that you enter in the first place. Where's the description? Whatever. Okay. Um, GraphQL backend with Next.js. Okay. Uh, do, 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 demo. Basic GraphQL application with Apollo, Apollo, um, server and client rendered via Next.js. That sounds very complicated. Let's make it simpler. Basic GraphQL application. Um, how do you how do you formulate that? Basic. So GraphQL client server GraphQL backed XJ. Um. Okay, how oh. tutorial on? Um, yeah, no, 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 okay. Wait. Next.js UI for GraphQL backend. Basic demo for Next.js UI for Next.js UI for GraphQL backend. Yeah, let's go with that. You know what? Screw that. <laughs> I want to think more about that. Okay, free open source tutorial on. 
basic GraphQL application with Apollo server and client rendered via Next.js. That's good. Everybody can use code ready for introduction to GraphQL using Apollo server clients video and i'm gonna paste the link later on project description this is multimo showing how to use follow server and client along with xjs front end to access mongo um let's spell it correctly mongodb using graphql right so related links what do we need here we need link to graphql link to next yes we need link to apollo server and i think we need link to apollo client i think that should be it so let's see graphql um no questions from the chat still which is once again absolutely fine by me next js okay apollo why do i always want to write apollo server with 2p is absolutely wrong but still doesn't stop me from wanting to write it clients i believe it's here as well yes and um did we use anything else so we have we have like a billion of packages in here press no, that seems about it. All right. Let's add readme. Add readme. And I guess we can push it over here. So as usual, um, the summary video that will be hopefully a bit more condensed and more informational than on my tries and, and suffering with GraphQL will be out within the next few days, um, hopefully like by Sunday or something on the YouTube channel. So if you are interested in that as well, be, you know, subscribe and see it there. If you're already watching on YouTube. Well, it's going to be out soon. So keep track on the releases. Okay, we did that. We pushed it. So it should be here right now. Yep good good okay cool um okay example is code is under this and once i upload the twitch code to youtube i will post the link there as well and i think we're basically done so it seems like there's no questions from you guys um i mean it was you know Two hours that took longer than usual but once again i never worked with graphql before that it does have some really neat features and some quite cool potential with regards to especially integrating the old databases that have multiple uh, related data sets let's call it this way so there's definitely can see some use cases but yeah it's, i mean it's been fun it's been fun so um once again if there are any questions, you still have a few minutes to write them. If there are none, then we can as well wrap this up right here. So close that. Close that. I'm gonna occur. I'm gonna stop my MongoDB meanwhile. Um, Mongo at what are you doing? Okay. Yeah, I think we are basically good. Seems like there's no questions. So thank you everyone for staying with me. Thank you for watching this. I hope you found something useful. Hope you at least enjoyed me suffering through the whole GraphQL thing. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't it wasn't too easy, but you know, it's not exactly complicated. There's just a lot of very confusing small bits that are not quite explained enough. Let's put it this way. I'll try to do my best to cover those in the... Uh, video i guess maybe they are properly explained in the graphql docs and you just have to read through them and then you understand everything we're gonna see how that goes i'm gonna do some um do some more reading into the spec i guess because you know that sounds like a reasonable thing to do be before covering all of that <laughs> um is it possible to mix mongodb data and api data and resolver yes basically resolver doesn't care where you get your data from you can just return a promise that resolves into the data by the query from the user. 
So it can be database, it can be a third party API, it can be your files on a file system, it can be pretty much anything, you know, it doesn't like the GraphQL itself or GraphQL server doesn't really care where you get the data from. Um, where's my mouse? Come on. We got, we had that bit here. Wait a second. Um, let me, let me, let me, this is Apollo. This is data result. There you go. So basically this, this returns a promise, right? This returns a promise to resolves into something. And as long as you resolve into something that is um, structured according to your schema. So in this case, if the author always have ID, first name, last name, posts, even though posts can be empty, you are like the, again, GraphQL server doesn't care where you take this data from. Any other questions? Somebody already uploaded it. That was quick, mate. <laughs> Whoops, that is not what I wanted to do. Okay. Well, seems like no more questions. I think two hours have been uh, more than enough of streaming. My head starts to going a bit crazy from all this coding. That's been, yeah, that's been tough. <laughs> so um, as always, thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to go to the, as usual, to proposals repo under building SWSGS. There should be a link under Twitch channel. There should be a link in the YouTube. And feel free to look through the proposals and the issues to vote on the ones that you think are good. So voting is just simply adding the, any reaction. I don't really care about which one you use. I just count the number of reactions. Feel free to add your own if you don't see what you wanna have covered here basically. So we did the GraphQL here. We might as well do something else if you think that you know it's useful. So do feel free to do that. Um, the next stream will be decided on next Tuesday. So basically I do uh, list the topics one, one, uh, one day in advance. As you know, there's this topics JS thing that you can execute and you will see the top voted topics. I just basically pick the top voted on Tuesday and uh, just go with that. So as for now, it looks like people are interested in the using of Golang libs from Node.js for fun and profit. And uh, I think my cat demands something from me. Cat, just go. Okay, uh, but yeah. So I think we're done. Thank you for watching. Thank you for staying with me this whole time. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, once again, suggest your topics. Vote for the ones that are interesting for you. Um, thank you for watching. And as always, I see you next Wednesday. Bye.